Hi there and welcome to the companion video for the blog post um, about checklists. Now we've all been there haven't we where we have turned up for a big job and we suddenly realise that we have maybe forgotten our drill, we've left it behind, it's still charging at home or maybe you go off to do a presentation and you left the laser pointer. Now a situation like that, not necessarily irretrievable, it can be dealt with, but then there are more serious circumstances, perhaps where you've spent many thousands of pounds to go off on a family holiday and you get to the airport and you suddenly realize that you've forgotten one of the passports. These errors um, are quite expensive and sometimes can be avoidable, but sometimes with the pressures of life, it can be quite difficult to make sure you get everything right all the time. And you could almost imagine that there's nearly too much life for one person to fly. And we all need a degree of cognitive support to help us. Now, this talk about checklists, um, it's certainly true that checklists are prevalent in a number of careers and certainly whenever I was looking into this I didn't realise, now we all know about pilots and their checklists, um, but there's a number of other careers who use it as well, so for example there's surgery, there's um, architects and indeed the military will often be big proponents of checklists and there is even a book written about it by, and I think it was an American surgeon from Boston and it's called The Checklist Manifesto and I had a quick review over it um, before writing this as well. But it's something that I naturally have been doing for a long number of years. Now, they say that there are around 16 basic different personality types. Um, and I fall into a group very, very squarely called ENFP. It's Myers-Briggs. If you're interested, you can look it up. And what has been really interesting to me as I've done a little bit of research into this, I see that I've got my really good points. And I see that, of course, that there are the weak points. But what has been good to learn about the weak points is not necessarily that I'm, as it were, a bad person or I'm um, unable to do things. It's just kind of how I'm wired. And of course, we need to put in mitigations to make sure that those weak points are not things dragging me down, but then I can actually focus on the good points. So in terms of good points, I have, I know that I've got an enormous amount of processing power, but I need to get this all very much aligned with my internal values and get myself over target before I really find that I'm able to execute. Now over the last number of years, I've learned various ways of dealing with this and managing this and getting better to it, getting better at it. Now in this blog, um, as we've discussed in the past, um, there are two zones. There is the green zone and the red zone. And each of these zones, the green zone that I would refer to is the area which is under your dominion, your control, and most importantly, your responsibility, what you should be taking care of um, as a matter of course. The red zone sits outside the perimeter wall. That is the unknown. That is the essentially where meaning is found and that is where is an area to be explored and investigated. And this is where kind of meaning in life comes from. We discussed this in other posts um, and, and videos as well. But really what we're talking about here is management of the green zone and the red zone. Now, if we're gonna talk about the green zone, the area that we control, what we should be looking at here is what I would call maintenance lists. Lists which allow us to check, to prove that we're ticking things over and everything's running right. Whenever you get into the red zone, that's where we're talking flap lists or like a panic list things to make sure that we're making the right considerations at the right time and we're thinking through all options um, available to us in that area. Now, as I said, this green zone, we need it to be ordered. We want it to be ordered. And it starts from the inside working out and that starts from your personal hygiene, your house bills, your family. But here's the thing that we often talk about here on this channel, entropy, life gets in the way. Everything runs down, we forget about things, we deprioritize things, and then suddenly they will become a bit of a problem. Now that red zone area, when we think, and we, the red zone area is really about whenever we think and we operate outside our comfort zone, outside our sort of domestic zone. And this could be things such as unusual work projects, it could be car accidents, it could be first aid, really any situation which is likely to provoke um, a sort of a, an an adrenaline producing response. It's typically very fast moving and you're trying to think and you're trying to focus and you're trying to, to understand and make right decisions under difficult circumstances. Now, the problems in life and where I see that the biggest problems in life come and the biggest disasters happen is whenever we have a situation where our green zone 
is not in a good state of order and the red zone the chaos there is an assault from outside and it hits our walls and if the house is divided internally in the green zone and thing our life isn't in, in good order that's when the problems actually happen and this is where what beforehand if it was everything was ordered internally what might be a retrievable situation will suddenly turn into a bad disaster movie something like the poseidon adventure and there's no guarantee um, you're going to escape it so whenever we talk about lists the lists that we create they should be organic they should be personalized and they should be short actionable tasks now remember this is not a to-do list but this is um a series of items and particularly when we're talking the maintenance one here it is daily um, or necessary actions or considerations that need to be undertaken each day and that we need to think about now a bad example might be for example if you write on your, your list have I gone for a run that is useful if you do run the vast majority of the time and you or, or, and you're able to do it but if for example you haven't actually yet bought your training shoes you don't actually own any training clothes that item on that list will frustrate you whenever it's there you need to start adding those type of items in whenever you've got the structure set up and you're actually doing it what we're trying to do here we're trying to build in momentum we're trying to build in success so really of a to-do list or a checklist sorry a checklist not a to-do list a checklist what we're trying to do is build momentum have success get 90% of it um, done um, each time. Now, you've got options. You can do it either analog or you can do it digital. You know, this is where I started off with my analog list, um, but now I've moved to digital. And I run it all now on Apple Reminders, um, and I have essentially a series of lists created. And what you can do on Apple Reminders, I'm sure Android have their own version of this. It's you, you set it up and you say show completed items, which you can sort of check that list on the top right. And that then allows you to see that whenever you've actually done something, you can check it and it will actually, it won't disappear. It'll stay on your list and you can have that sense of success and see um, quite visually what you've completed and what still is left to complete. Now, where I find checklists are particularly useful is whenever you lose momentum, and it's happened to all of us, we lose our bearings at times, we get depressed, and maybe there's been a, a death in the family or, or there's been some real difficulty has struck us. And sometimes life can feel like wading through treacle. And this is very often where these checklists will come in. And it's these places where you wanna put in tasks that are really easy to achieve. Now, this could even be just as simple as a list to get you out of bed in the morning though you set your alarm clock you get up you brush your teeth you make a cup of coffee you have a shower you um, pray it, it could be just a, a very series simples of tasks series a very simple series of list of tasks that you go through every day and you don't make it complicated you just tick it you get it done but over time it will just give you a bit of momentum and you will start moving um, ahead in life if you do do this over several weeks, I guarantee that you will see vast improvements in that green zone area of your life. Life will feel more ordered. Things will feel like they are more in control and you will start to get on top of things. Now, having done this over the years myself, um, and I continue to do it, what you will see is that you lapse and you forget about things and you let things slide. And then all of a sudden, you're gonna get an attack from the red zone. And you're going to realize oh my goodness i've let things slide and things start getting out of kilter and then you need to it's almost that sort of you've got to go back into the process you start it again you start getting on top of life and you start doing it and it's almost whenever your green zone is ordered there's attacks happening maybe on a regular basis but you don't even notice them because you're so well prepared you're so well ordered that you're able to repel those attacks and they barely uh, they're bouncing off your armor as it were but it's whenever life is disordered that the as it were the, the enemy is able to sneak through the gaps in your defenses and can cause quite a bit um, of trouble for you so listen i encourage you to give checklists a go um, they work very much for me it's something you've got to work out for yourself i mean i could give you ideas but you know what you need to do um, in your life my only advice i would give you is keep the lists very simple very binary it's almost like a yes no 
did I consider it or did I not? Reduce the complexity at all the times. Every time you look at it, reduce the complexity. If there's items on your list that just consistently you're not doing, um, you're, you don't intend to do them, yes, it's nice to have them there, but you're not doing it and you, you really don't, cut them, cut them until such times as you're, you're starting to do it, unless it's important that you need to do it. So I'd be really interested to hear um, how you're getting on with it. Write me some comments down below or alternatively go to the blog site and send me um, a post through the internal mailing system within it. But listen, thanks for turning up and I hope to speak to you soon.